Sometimes a single moment can define your entire experience with a game. For better or for worse, people oftentimes come away from a playthrough with a game with a few quintessential experiences that define that entire game for them. But when it comes to talking about games, people tend to avoid these unique moments and instead default to talking about game mechanics and beats of the main storyline. And frankly, I think this is a mistake. Ever since my friend gifted me a copy of Disco Elysium in early September, there was one moment in my playthrough that has stuck with me, more so than any other moment. And in this video, I want to talk about that moment, because frankly, I think it shows why Disco Elysium works in the first place, and I think it can articulate it a lot better than a long, drawn-out video essay. So with that, I present the moment that sold me on Disco Elysium. Further up along the coast, there's a rundown payphone, and this payphone is the most defining thing in all of Disco Elysium, at least for me that is. Let me explain. So one night I turned in early at the free shack in the fishing village, so Kim left me, but I still wanted to explore the coast, so I stumbled across this unsuspecting payphone and I started making calls on it. In all honesty, I was just kind of messing around, like on this one phone call I was telling this guy that I was sleeping with his wife, so these phone calls, they were just kind of prank phone calls to like random numbers, and I thought they were written well, had good prompts, but then something popped up that changed this payphone totally for me. I was prompted to dial a number with my eyes closed, which in typical Disco Elysium fashion failed the first time, but I tried again to a successful attempt. You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial, then pull down on the number, then move one up and repeat the motion twice. 41, 44, 47. The rotary dial feels cold from the sea air. 11, 17, 361. Your fingers keep moving like a spider every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal, like a bell tolling. 451, 67. 451. You are going deeper now, into some unknown place, far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. 451. You have dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think, but it does a connection. And then after the endless calling, you're met with a voice. I'm gonna be honest when I say that this simple hello left me speechless. The entirety of Disco Elysium is spent learning about the deeply flawed man that is Harry, and this phone call in many ways is a culmination of that. You're finally able to interact with the often elusive Dora, Harry's former lover, who up to this point has been mentioned very sparingly. You see Harry go from this confident posture leaning against the phone to hunching over like a scared child. And when one of the opening prompts is, I want to die, you know Harry's about to pour out some deeply emotional stuff. And this phone call illustrates Harry and Dora's dysfunctional relationship rather well. It's insinuated by Dora multiple times that an unsolicited phone call from Harry isn't out of the ordinary, and she even jumps to the conclusion that Harry's drunk, which, knowing Harry, would seem pretty rational. The phone call goes on, with Harry making many bold claims to Dora, but at the same time coming off as an emotionally broken man. When the phone ran out of money, I immediately called Dora back given the chance, and you can just hear the resignation and somberness in her voice upon answering. She hangs up again, and when you try to call, there's no answer. The phone is left calling, and Harry in his anger punches the phone if you prompt him to. And with that, the phone call ends, and Harry walks in to the night. The reason I experienced this phone call was all by half and chance, and I could have easily left after making the prank phone calls, but I didn't, and because of that, I was able to experience the moment of Disco Elysium that defines this game for me. And the reason I love this moment so much is because it shows that every aspect of Disco Elysium has purpose. 
There's so much time and effort put into every system and every object in this game that even upon my second playthrough, I can't even fathom how hard it was for Zom to implement this stuff. But because of that effort, even a random payphone has secrets to behold, and these random objects and events help not only create an amazing deep world, but also an amazing place for characters like Harry to have their problems manifest themselves and be explored. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed me talking about like my favorite moment in Disco Elysium, because I truly do love this game, and I think it's a masterpiece. But anyways, you can follow me on my socials if you want to, or even subscribe and like, that'd be amazing. But there should be a lot more videos coming, because this semester from college is over, and I have a long-ass winter break, so I have a lot of video ideas, a lot more videos are coming out, so thank you for sticking with me, and if you enjoyed this video, thank you. Peace!